Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to Granite Haven. Today I am going to be talking about some seeds that I am starting for the fall. This is mostly going to be vegetables, but I do have a few flowers sprinkled in there. Right now it is, I think, the last week of June, so very nearly July. And for us, this is a good time to be starting things for the fall. All of these things I'm going to be growing indoors and they are going to be transplanted out hopefully at the end of July. So the plan is that they'll grow inside for three to four weeks and then they'll be transplanted as seedlings into the garden. By that time, it is still gonna kind of be middle of summer. So it seems kind of weird to be putting fall crops into the garden, but if they don't get put in early enough, then they're not gonna have enough time to mature before the fall. Last year, I was just a little bit late in getting my stuff out. So this year I'm trying to do it a little bit earlier. I think I'm like one or two weeks earlier than I started these things last year. And because these are fall garden crops, these are also all things that are frost hardy. So they'll kind of be maturing as our first frost date approaches, which I think for us is mid-October. So they'll be hopefully about fully grown or ready to harvest around then. But if we do get an early frost, then these things will just stay out there and it'll be no problem. But really probably what I'll do is a lot of these things I will keep until even after our first frost, they can stay out there and a lot of these things will get even sweeter. So timing is pretty crucial when you're doing a fall garden because you have that first frost coming. The days are getting shorter and colder weather is approaching so you kind of want to get these things growing while it's still kind of warm out. So anyway let me just go into the varieties I'm going to be starting today. Most if not all of these things are going to be in the brassica family so things like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower and I'll start with my first variety of broccoli which is the Green Magic Hybrid Broccoli. This is the broccoli that I grew this spring and I harvested between like May and June, most of them were ready. It did really well for me. They formed nice heads, which is the first broccoli I have ever been able to successfully grow. So I was really happy with this variety and I'm going to be trying it again. This is a specifically heat tolerant variety, but broccoli in general is at least to some degree frost hardy. So I wanna see how it does in the fall weather. And hopefully because it is heat tolerant, that will help it as it is developing throughout the late summer. I also have another variety of broccoli. This is kind of an interesting one. This is called purple sprouting broccoli and this is a broccoli that needs to be overwintered. So you can plant it out in the summer and leave it in the ground throughout fall and winter and then very early spring a couple of years ago when I grew this, we were harvesting, I think around March and April. So it's like one of the first things to be ready to harvest in the spring. You'll be able to get like little broccoli shoots. They don't form big heads, but they form a ton of shoots. And if you just gather a whole bunch of those, it will basically amount to the same thing as a broccoli head. So I did have success with these a couple of years ago and they can grow unprotected in zones 7B and warmer. We're in zone 7A, so I'll probably cover these with frost fabric and I think that should be enough. I think when I grew them a couple of years ago though, I didn't cover them at all and we're in 7A and they still did fine. We're kind of like on the cusp of whether or not this can overwinter, but depending on where I put them, if I'm able to, I might cover them with a frost fabric. Next, I have some cauliflower. The first one is hybrid white bishop cauliflower. I tried to grow this in the spring, but something happened with my seeds and they didn't grow so I wasn't able to actually plant them out because the plants just weren't growing and I didn't reseed them. So I'm gonna try growing them and see how they do. So this will basically be like my first try growing these. So I'm not sure how those will do yet. Then I have an heirloom purple of Sicily cauliflower. I think I grew this last year and they didn't produce very large heads for me. I did get like basically the equivalent of like one floret of cauliflower per plant, so it definitely was not that great. So I'll be trying it again. And between this heirloom variety and the hybrid one, hopefully at least one of those will produce some cauliflower. Next, I have a couple of varieties of cabbage. I have a green cone-shaped cabbage called Cor de Boo. And this one has done well for us in the past. We've gotten some nice sized heads out of these. And then I'm also going to be trying red acre cabbage. I have tried these for a few years and they never really produce like huge heads for us. 
but I'm not really sure if it's the variety or if it's because of our soil because since we've tried them which was a couple of years ago I think the soil in our garden has gotten better we've been adding a lot of compost to it over the last couple of years and also now that we have chickens we're able to add their manure on top of our soil which helps to add nutrients and I think that really has helped our garden this year so hopefully with how our soil is now maybe this cabbage will do better we're just going to give it another try then I also have like a Chinese cabbage this one is called Hilton and this one has also done pretty well for us in the past I think we've gotten some nice size heads out of these and I really like Napa cabbage it's great for stir fries and also for making dumplings and kimchi as well and then lastly in the brassica family I'm going to start some kohlrabi we really like to make a kohlrabi slaw out of this which is good on tacos or like pulled pork sandwiches and this isn't like a staple crop for us they're kind of just like fun and interesting to grow so i'll usually just grow a couple of those so those are all the vegetables i am starting today in like seed trays and i also pulled out a bunch of seeds that i'm not going to be planting today but i did want to just show them to you these are all things that i have pulled out of my seed box and i keep them on my desk because anytime a space opens up in my garden for the next month or two i'm just going to be popping some of these seeds in those empty spaces as space becomes available that way i am always maximizing my space once something comes out and the space opens up i am immediately replanting it with something else to give it enough time to mature before the fall so a lot of these things are root crops which is why I'm not starting them beforehand because I just prefer to direct sow these so first I have some radishes and these are radishes that I only plant in the fall and winter they're not like the French breakfast or scarlet globe types these are really large winter radishes they store really well either in the ground if your climate doesn't get too cold or you can pull them out before like a really hard frost and keep them in your fridge and I've had them last in my fridge for a couple of months which is really great for those winter months so the first one is China Rose which gets to five inches long and they get really thick and they also just have that beautiful bright pink color that a lot of radishes have and the next one that I have is a daikon radish this is a white radish it's a little bit more mild than red radishes in my opinion I've never had any of my daikons get like super huge but I'm just gonna keep trying them I really like to pickle these they're also good roasted and I also like to include them in my kimchi next I have some carrots and I have the scarlet nantes carrots and then a new to me variety that I just purchased this is the new Kuroda carrot and I'm really curious to try these because I'm hoping that they will be more of a storage carrot that will be able to stay in the ground for a long time so I'll be trying those out they do get a little larger than the carrots I've grown in the past which will be really good for winter cooking I also have some turnips these are Tokonashi Japanese small white turnips. I really like these. They're very mild, really good roasted and in soups. I also have a more standard purple top turnips. This one is not in a fancy packet, so it doesn't have a picture or anything, um, but it's just like the pretty standard purple turnip that you would get at the grocery store. I also have like a little bit of this packet of rutabaga seeds, which I'm not sure if I've had very good luck with or if we like them very much but I'm just gonna finish up this packet because I have it and then another new thing that I'm going to be trying out are parsnips which I think really should get in the ground pretty soon because they take a hundred days till maturity which is a pretty long time so these are probably going to be the first thing I'm going to pop in the ground once some space opens up and for pretty much all of these root vegetables it is really nice for them to be harvested after you get your first frost because they do get a little bit sweeter it concentrates the sugars in those root vegetables also some other vegetables that I'm not going to be starting today because it's not quite time yet I'm gonna wait a few weeks are things like kales lettuces and tender greens those things I'll probably wait like two to three weeks maybe even a month before I start those. Just wanted to throw that out there because I'm not sure if I'm gonna show that or not when the time comes, but 
that's another thing to kind of just like have on your radar especially if your first frost date is a lot earlier than ours is you might not have enough time for some of the things that i'm mentioning today but you might have time for things that grow a little bit quicker like those quick growing greens and lastly i'm going to be starting some flowers that can be overwintered the first one is my pink gin fox gloves actually i'm not sure if i even have any seeds left in here i think i only have a few I didn't realize I was out of seeds, so unfortunately that one is not going to get planted today. But I did leave a lot of my flowers on the stalks out in the fields, and I'm hoping that they will reseed themselves. I have Canterbury Bells here, which I just purchased and will be trying out for the first time. So these ones, you can plant them out just like the vegetables that I've been talking about. You just plant them out in late summer or early fall. They overwinter and then they'll bloom early in the spring. There are actually a ton of flowers that you can plant in the summer to overwinter for the spring. I haven't like completely gone through my collection to go through all those. So I'm just gonna start the Canterbury Bells for now, but I may start some other varieties later on if I think I'm gonna have space. So anyway, those are the seeds that I've pulled out. I'm gonna go outside now and start those in some seed trays. For all of the seeds that I'm starting today, I'm just using regular old potting mix. I'm not using special seed starting mix. Brassica seeds germinate very readily and I find that they're not really very picky about what kind of soil you use. So potting mix is going to be just fine for this. And I am pre-moistening it with some water so that it is nice and moist, which is especially important this time of year because if you have your bags of soil sitting outside or in a greenhouse like we do, that soil can get really dry. And I wanted to absorb some of that water before we add it to the trays so that when we add water later, all the soil doesn't just like float out of the tray. and I'm going to start filling up my seed tray. I'm using a 72 cell seed tray here and this will fit pretty much everything that I want to grow vegetable wise. And I also have a single four cell pack that I'm going to use for my Canterbury Bells. And then I'm going to place my plant markers at the beginning of each row before I open up any seeds. That way I don't get anything mixed up. And for most of these varieties, I'm just going to do one or two rows of each of them. I've already pre-planted out based on how much I think we will need and how much I think we will consume of each thing. So we'll have either six or 12 of each variety in the end. Then for these seeds, I just make a little divot in each of these cells, place a few seeds into each of them, and then I cover it up lightly with soil. I am really not too fussy about like the depth that seeds have to be planted at. I feel like, especially for these kind of smaller ones, as long as they're covered a little bit, it's gonna be just fine. And like I said, these seeds do germinate very easily, so they are not picky at all. But having a layer of soil on top of them does help to keep them moist while they're germinating as well. And these seeds will germinate pretty quickly. It should really only take like three days, especially with our house being really warm in the summer right now. I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this already know the drill from all of the seeds that we started in the spring. But if you've thought of seed starting as just something you do in the spring once a year in the past, I hope that you'll rethink it because there are still so many things that you can start whatever season you're in. And really that's the best way to make the most of your garden and your space. To make sure you're getting multiple different kinds of crops and plants out of that one space each year. For the Canterbury Bells, those seeds are really tiny, so I sprinkled quite a few of those over the top. I'm not sure how the germination is gonna be for those, so I went a little heavy-handed just to make sure I get something, and then I lightly sprinkled some soil over that. 
After all of these seeds are planted in the seed tray, I am going to move this inside where these are going to grow as little seedlings on my seed starting rack with a grow light. The grow light doesn't have to be on until the seeds come up. I just have mine on right now because I have started a few other plants and I forgot to mention these earlier, but these are Brussels sprout seedlings and I started these maybe about a week ago just because these do take a little bit longer to grow so I wanted to get a little head start on those and they have already germinated and are growing now so I just have the light on for them and once all of the other seeds that I planted germinate, then the lights will be ready for them there as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one.